Okay, now let's get very serious. I've just returned from Belgrade and visited Radio Belgrade, uh, the studio of electronic music. The leader of the uh, studio is Svetlana Maras. You will see her in the video and I talked with her about the Sinti 100. They've been reconstructing or repairing uh, uh, in the last year and now they're looking forward to do concerts, workshops. You, you might even uh, apply for doing a project there if you're a serious professional composer. Uh, so this is uh, very interesting to see, a lot of talking, we had a conversation on that, she said it told uh, a lot about the machine, I have some experience uh, in that, uh, so watch out, uh, I think it's a very interesting video and stand by, there's lots, lots of information on the EMS and you will find it's wonderful, it's a world wonder, that's what I think. Okay, guess where we are? Finally a dream comes true, this is Belgrade, Radio Belgrade, this is uh, Svetlana Maras. And we'd like to introduce to you this here, incredible, the EMS Synthi 100. It's a myth out there, and everybody knows about this machine, but rarely has been seen. And Svetlana, what happened to this thing? It wasn't really broken, but it was just not used, with maybe some small things mm -hmm. to be fixed. And it was standing here and collecting dust, basically. <laughs> Until actually last year, September, when we had this magnificent crew uh, made of uh, Daniel Araya from Sweden and Yari Suominen from Finland. Experts were Sinti 100 who uh, brought this uh, machine back to life in mm -hmm. the studio. And actually this uh, is a new chapter of the studio itself. Uh, we just started uh, whole new programs based on uh, on this instrument and there's going to be much more i really hope in the mm -hmm. future both instruments and the uh, programs i have maybe something interesting to show you regarding the synthy parts um ah, these are the cards that are yeah. inside the synthy no more so, so this is a typical spare part already yeah so uh, synthy in the back contains four racks with mm -hmm. these kind of cards and if you follow the manual, you will see that, I mean, Sinti manual, you will see that uh, yeah. each of the parameters, uh, uh, each of devices actually, yeah. uh, takes a couple of different racks and uh, um, cards. Supposedly there's about 84 of them. I've seen that from the Melbourne uh, S100. I'm not that sure, we but have quite a, a lot of them. documentation, yeah. but I don't know yeah. by heart now yeah. exactly. Um, there were lots of uh, old pins that we needed to yes. clean in order to work. These this I still need to like. Yeah. <laughs> to uh, this is not easy because there are resistors yeah. in there. The white ones exactly. are with 27k. Yeah. When you enter the pin, it's basically connecting two plates with, mm -hmm. together with the, this resistor inside. So this is the matrix and we just make a short run through here. The left matrix is for the audio signals. Going to ring modulators, envelope shapers, filters, oscillators, filter bank, output channels, output channel, of course, important. And uh, there's a special port in here where you have pins with different uh, resistors inside, and the right matrix is for control voltages. And all in all, it's uh, 3600 possibilities to put it, so it makes 7200. Imagine this. Uh, doing by patching like in a more big system it's nearly impossible. We have the speciality of the S100, the envelope shapers as you might know. Uh, in this case the off from the AKS or VCS3 is the delay. Uh, I don't touch it because Svetlana has done some patches here which she might explain later on. You have the attack, the on, the decay and the trapezoid that can be routed via the matrix to everything like to the filters um, it's got the three envelope shapers over here and ring modulators and reverb of course you get in the other machines also and this bandpass uh, filter, octave filter bank you can do like formant filtering by that you don't uh, get this on, on the small machines also yeah. there's no the only yeah. kind of uh, bad, not really bad, but the thing missing is that you cannot control individual bands on the patch board which will be like yes. quite uh, an interesting thing to do you get two trapezoid outputs of one envelope shaper. Uh, that's crazy because they are time shifted. Uh, you can do one trapezoid on a filter for example uh, and the other one will, uh, the first will start uh, let's say at the attack and the other one uh, will start one cycle later. So you can do very co complex envelope shaping by this. Yeah. 
Uh, this is a specialty of the S100. It's not in the other machines I found. Mm. And there's even uh, one that's pimped by Rebat in Germany. He has got two little buttons here uh, where you can uh, uh, route it to the other envelope and uh, interfere with many envelopes. So there's uh, also some space for modding in this. Yes. Yeah. He did it, uh, but there's an upcoming concert uh, soon where you might uh, put yeah, a saxophone not in. Me, or but yeah, Paul Pignon, who founded the, the studio, is going to be using uh, the machine to process his uh, live sounds from his uh, yeah. instrument. This is the general mixer for yeah. the whole synth. Yeah. So you can you can uh, route the input amplifiers from here to anything. For envelope shaping, for exactly, example. Exactly, yeah, and, yeah, or anything else, yeah. any device in the yeah. city, and yeah. then take it yeah. out to uh, well, some of J the just channels. Just tell us about Paul Pinion, because the story of this uh, synthesizer in Belgrade is quite crazy, isn't it? Yeah. It's one of the, it's number four, uh, yeah, we found yeah, out, or you found four. out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, the story goes that uh, Paul Pinion, uh, and basically uh, the whole radio Belgrade, and especially third program. Mm -hmm. uh, third program is uh, the one where Electronic Studio actually belongs. Mm -hmm. um, they supported the, the initiative to find to make the studio and especially to order CMT 100. And the story goes that uh, if the Radio Belgrade uh, hasn't uh, ordered the CMT, there would never be like uh, production of uh, electronic music, CMT yeah. 100. Ah, yes, he was yeah. one of the first, and he was a physicist also. He studied at Oxford, I know, and... Yeah. The, you know, you can see from this manual yeah. uh, that he understood quite well, yeah. you know, how the instrument yeah. should be built and what's inside, how it works. This um, is great, yeah. Yeah, this is excellent. It took me some nights to, to read this. <laughs> yeah. and you don't really read it, it because yeah. you need to be a physicist to understand what's Absolutely. going on. And he's still around, and we will do this concert here. Isn't that yes, brilliant? Yes, Paul so Pinion is going to uh, join us for the opening concert, and even more, he's going to mm -hmm. do a workshop, first workshop oh, of yes. the renowned uh, yeah. electronic studio with uh, yeah. new students who will be working with the Cindy later on. Uh, so, yeah, we are really looking forward to have him here. So it's, it's coming alive again, That's this whole, whole thing will come alive again. This is so great. Paul Pinion, yes. the studio founder. This is uh, Vladimir Radovanovic, mm -hmm. uh, the other studio founder. Mm -hmm. uh, Zorana Hrashovic was in charge of... Uh, she was uh, also the engineer mm -hmm. and she was in charge of uh, Sinti mm -hmm. 100. So I'm just, I just want to patch the clock uh, into sequestered. Yes, sequestered just go. Clock. Yeah, it's running already. Yeah, so it's got a running. clock now. So we have it, we can control yeah. it from... With this one. wonderful display here, yeah, it looks like Nixie tubes. <laughs> yeah, these are like. Yes, yes. We are controlling it. And you're and controlling it there? It's not going to. Yeah. So that's what I pinned. Uh, so there's a clock rate, clock you can change it uh, so the speed of the whole thing you're recording. Upwards. Then you had to have eight layers or. You have uh, four layers. Four layer yes. layers you can put. And then uh, you, you have. Uh, each layer has uh, two voltages and. Uh, and a key that you can that you can memorize, mm -hmm. and then you route this. But we have this additional uh, MIDI input, which is gray, and that's why we use the MIDI keyboard. But we at the moment don't have a very convenient small one, but yeah. rather use this large one. So, yeah. so the idea I think of Zinovia of Cockerell was to expand it into a, a, a hybrid system, analog digital. Yeah. And I've seen in Germany there is one prototype of mm -hmm. a digital device you could, could add on this side here oh, uh, okay. to control it by a, a computer. And they had the software news uh, okay. that you can also use to, to as you just mentioned, this yeah, now is MIDI, but yeah. they had the idea that it can be controlled by software also. But that was the end of the 70s and then uh, no, everything broke down not, in yeah. a way. I showed you. Uh, I like this, like how these, how I combine these, like uh, three event shapers, yes. like three very short clicks, uh, and then uh, to, I can decide on there. Th there is one step. I mean, one, one step between each of these. So they're like. Okay. So the delay is different. One is zero. One is exactly, minus one. One is two. Exactly. But I can increase the proportion by of the, the, the joysticks. All the delay with the joystick. Yes. So if yes. you follow what's happened and change the tempo. Yeah. And plus the noise that I'm, that I'm putting through this bandpass filter. So just these two without any 
major. It's already a nice sound. Yeah, it is. I, I think it's quite ambiental and I'm going to keep it. <laughs> so I'm in the process yeah. of like uh, uh, kind of uh, no, noting down some of these. Uh, Trapezoid is also like an oscillator mm -hmm. uh, via uh, amplitude modulation. You get the sidebands and it's uh, so different from ADSR. Mm -hmm. And especially, it's, it's, I think it's the, the only ones who uh, could do it. You can get this today also mm -hmm. uh, by analog uh, systems, but it's not that nice. You have these. Through the, uh, through the filter, I will let you know in a second. Okay, like a sample let's see. The it's like mm -hmm. well, uh, okay, channel six. Channel six is um, yeah. It's only the high pass filter number three. So you see, if you add response, I mean, if you if the response is on zero, yeah. it acts like a regular filter. If you add it, it's self oscillating. You get the sinus and exactly and into action, and you can and put up the frequency. Yeah, great exactly. idea. And then, like with the with the control of. Uh, this one? Yes. You can get ah, some, like, minor in. things, or you can get some uh, more kind of beat things, <laughs> more mm. kind of yeah. straightforward. Mm. 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 Yeah, so I'm, I'm more or less working with this like um, ways to randomize and to. Cur I would say with this like percussive element. Yes. And then if you do it. Essence also have a like a quirky thing, like in the trapezoid, uh, it's not uh, um, particularly uh, everything divided perfectly from the other one. It's yeah. not that perfectly done, uh, and this makes the typical charm of EMS. There is a certain amount of uncertainty. There uh, is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there is. I mean, there are stories. You know that, like, if you leave your window open, you're gonna get a different uh, sound. Yeah, a different Temperature yeah, I mean, changes, uh, yes. You can do fine tuning, of course, yeah. uh, using the oscilloscope to, you know, to, to get the perfect frequency yeah. and uh, that kind of thing, yeah. but... Leave yeah. it running before the concert. Yeah. At least <laughs> two or three hours before yeah. it starts, if you want to have a pitch, but who wants yeah, to have no, perfect I'm not pitch? Really really not really. <laughs> what we already see is uh, how complicated it is. Uh, you must keep the matrix uh, uh, in your mind. What did yeah. I do here? EMS 100 is made for electronic music experiments uh, and um, trying to figure out what can I do, especially with the matrix. It's not this sort of uh, keyboard oriented primarily. Yeah. I, I, I never miss the keyboard on the EMS 100. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's just getting into I, it. Yeah, I would never, for now, I would never use it because there's already so many options mm. here yeah. that you can use. I mean, just like, you know, if you. You, you just put it out yeah. and have a different sound. Yeah. That's that's so great. Prepare them and then switch them exactting. in, and then then, yeah. then it's like a little bit yeah, presetting, then, yes. Then I can you know use the same the same channel in a completely different way. If you just like uh, I don't know, just, like, yeah. just random thing. And here we go. Yeah. yeah. That was great. Yeah, yeah, it sounded I'm like a, a human voice, and uh, yeah. yeah, I know these patches that you sometimes you think this can't be a synthesizer. Yeah, it sounds like a sample, for example. Yeah. Yes, it's possible. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, and I wanted to, to demonstrate the famous uh, spring reverb. <laughs> so I, I just remember this one, so six ramp. Let's do number two. Yes, yes, yes. And yes. then you will hear it actually. Completely different than the modular synthesizer yes. they require patching with cables, and somehow I, I'm still not attracted to do to mm. do that even after working because I think synth is much, much more elegant. Mm. I mean, just the fact that you have pins and that you kind of uh, there's a particular kind of order in your head when you're working with it. That I don't know. I wouldn't go into modular synths, yes. other modular synths, because yeah. of the synth. I. I have to because I can't afford. <laughs> <You're like> the <laughs> well, can there are some private uses yeah. out there. We know yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, 
yeah, this is it's just a dream, you know. Wow. <laughs> 